All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. So in today's video, I thought I would give you guys a detailed explanation on some of the differences between Black Celeste, Blue Celeste, and even just regular old Celeste is what some people might call it. Um, there are many different types of Celeste. Even a lot of figs have been bred with Celeste um, through the LSU breeding program many years ago. And there's a great reason for that is because it's really a very special fig. Even just a fig that you may not even think of as very tasty. You might not think of it as quite rare or expensive or hard to find. You may find it in your backyard, but believe it or not, because a lot of us live in very humid places here in the United States and we're trying to grow figs, it's really important that we focus on varieties that are very rain resistant split resistant can do well in our our humid climates and um, that has sort of set me down this path the last three or four years trying to find um, as many celeste heirlooms as i could realizing the beauty of this fig and how amazing it actually is i had realized that there must be a celeste a, a type of celeste a strain of celeste a source of celeste maybe a Celeste in your backyard right now that is very special. And I've been trying to accumulate as many of them as I can to grow them, um, compare them, and to figure out really which one is above and beyond the others, and to see if maybe one would stack up against some of the best varieties I grow. Uh, in fact, we really talked about this even in an entire episode of Fruit Talk here, episode 18, that we did in 2019, the beginning of 2019. So this is really almost three years ago at this point. And we went through this and talked about blue, black, and regular Celeste. We even talked a little bit about, I think, uh, Pastelier because it's blue. And um, I showed you guys a different couple different sources for Celeste. Um, I'm growing quite a few, and I want to just highlight my spreadsheet here that you guys can find this down in the description of any of my videos there is a fig synonym sheet down here in the spreadsheet and there's a number of them that I would consider of a similar type now in Peru Celeste and O'Rourke those were bred with Celeste by LSU to improve upon Celeste to attempt to improve upon Celeste um, there are others that I think uh, you can find just as unknowns or random figs with, with certain names that have kind of floated around uh, different people's collections in the fig community. And this is a pretty decent list of some of the varieties that I've come across. It's definitely not updated, but these are some of the varieties that I have come across and I've added it to this list. Uh, some of which I'm growing is the Villa de Marseille. I'm growing the one. I have grown Sweet Diana in the past. Um, I'm growing Stallion. And there's even other uh, varieties that I've found locally. Um, there's a type of Celeste that I found in Ocean City, New Jersey, down by the beach. Um, there's a, a couple uh, heirlooms that I've picked up from random people now at this point who have sent me cuttings of Celeste, and I've been trying to really accumulate as many of these as I can. And of course I grow Improved Celeste and have grown O'Rourke in the past. Um, now I've also talked about on my blog here, figboss.com for anyone that's interested, we've talked about the many strains of Celeste in a more of an updated form than this video here that we did uh, three years ago. So as we've been learning, I've been updating uh, my thoughts on this partic particular topic um, to include some more updated information and more accurate information. Um, I seem to have originally thought, not I seem to, I did originally think that Blue Celeste and regular old Celeste was a different fig. And it's very possible that they are. I'm sure they are, actually. Um, but if you look at them genetically, as John Verdick did, um, I don't know how long ago, with genetic testing through the USDA, UC Davis, he mentions publicly that 
generally I he says generally I propagate from Celeste JN, GM, IS, and Blue Celeste JN. Those are my favorites, favorites, which is why I propagate them. Fruit drop has not been an issue on any of my Celeste trees in my collection, and DNA testing indicates uh, all of the Celestes and Blue Celestes are the same. He says, I think we tested 19 different ones, but the performance here is not the same. Which is a really good point because I think this could really apply to many other varieties that exist within the fig communities. Take the many different types of Villette de Bordeaux that have different names, whether that's Nero 600M, Petit Albic, um, Negretta Unknown. Uh, there's so many of them. Again, you can find a lot of these here in my spreadsheet. Um, not all of these are, of course, synonyms, but look at this long list of. Vila de Bordeaux that people uh, a lot of people might actually consider them um, synonyms of each other and th that also brings up the point of Hardy Chicago and how many different named Hardy Chicago's I've found over the years and added to this list and thrown them in here um, that of course probably if you tested them genetically although no one has to such a high extent they probably would be very similar, if not the same, genetically. And um, although if you were to grow a lot of these figs side by side, you would notice a lot of differences, whether they're very small differences. Some of them, unfortunately, are not easy to observe. Um, you really need a trained eye for this kind of thing. But this is pretty much, I think, where really the best argument at this point is in terms of fig synonyms whether or not one fig is the same as he, as another uh, whether or not it's different than another um, you know and then also thinking about this through a genetic lens as well whether that was done through genetic testing or if thinking about figs and how they change over time and, and adapt to their locations and sort of evolve or if their genetics are changing based on their location, uh, whether certain genes are being turned on or turned off. And of course, I'm not a geneticist, and there's a lot more to this than I, that I don't know. But I think this is a really good way to look at this in the lens of Celeste, in that a lot of Celestes and Blue Celestes were tested genetically, I later found out, and they all ended up being the same. So what are the differences then between Black Celeste and Blue Celeste? Because as we know here, between regular Celeste and Blue Celeste, there is no difference genetically, but there are differences in terms of performance or observations that you might make. Um, really quickly, I don't think all of the Celeste, regular Celeste figs, or blue celeste figs are created equally. So they may share the same genetics, like I said, but again, one of them is gonna show better characteristics for a particular climate. One of them might be more vigorous. One of them might be more productive. One of them might not drop figs as often. One of them may have more tastier fruits. One of them more ha uh, might have better drying capabilities. One of them you know, may not split as often, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, typically, I think a lot of people nowadays are drawn to, probably because of myself and a couple other growers, um, we're more drawn to the, the Celeste figs that turn blue and have a bluer skin. Now, does that mean the ones that don't necessarily get as blue as others, does that mean they're not as tasty? Typically, that's usually not the case in that the pulp is really what determines the flavor although a blue skin is really catching to the eye so some of the blue celeste strains or celeste strains I've found uh, have grown and you can find information out on the internet here is this one here this is blue celeste which you can find from the USDA um, actually probably pretty easily um, 
So this one, I don't, I believe this should be the one from the USDA. I imagine um, that's what Thierry here is writing about on his blog. But you can see, uh, for anyone interested, by the way, it's figuesdemand.wordpress. This is uh, a French grower's blog. And um, you can see some photos here of Blue Celeste. You can note the, the bluer skin, a reasonably long stem, you know, a, a longer neck, and then, of course, the teardrop, the classic teardrop shape that you would typically see, the pyroform shape that you would typically see. Here is actually the perfect leaf pattern right here that I've seen on every Celeste that isn't bred with Celeste or a product of Celeste. This is the leaf pattern that I've seen, whether that's black Celeste, whether that's blue Celeste, whether that's regular Celeste, whatever it is. Um, this is probably the perfect one, and I really you can really easily recognize it with these back parts here to the leaves if you can call these lobes go for it uh, but typically these are present and then um, it has the three lobes in the front and then I also typically see on a lot of the leaves this uh, jagged edge here this second uh, lobe that is trying to form on both sides or either one side as you might see here stemming from this uh, main front lobe. And this is really good, the shape here. Um, even the jagged sort of serrated edges here to the outside edges of the leaf. And then this almost a triangle shape here on a lot of the lobes that forms is uh, very typical. So this is really what you end up seeing. Um, here's actually some photos from John Verdict at Figs for Fun. I also will, no will note that uh, a very good characteristic of Celeste is the void. And typically at the void, you'll end up seeing some discoloration or a couple of the flower parts are just a bit weird in the center by the void. Um, and I'll show you that kind of as we go along here. Even actually, I'll just point it out right now. Even on Black Celeste, um, yeah, I'm not really seeing it here. I think you can kind of make it out here. Yeah, you can make it out a little bit right here. So some of the flower parts are just a bit strange in color, as you'll note, in that void. Um, so that's uh, one way of determining, you know, is it Celeste? Is typically the first thing you look at is the shape, the length of the stem, the length of the neck, you know, uh, the skin color, the inside of the fruit, which uh, will show you the void. Um, typically, it's a very sweet fruit. Um, and you'll notice, hopefully, uh, good rain resistance, split resistance, a closed eye. And then, of course, the leaf pattern as well. So um, that's kind of Celeste. That's blue Celeste. Um, some of the Celeste, as I mentioned, they don't get necessarily as blue to the skin. I think it depends on your conditions, your environment, what's in your soil. Um, it also does depend on the variety. So some, some of these Celeste that you typically may see down in the south, their varieties just may not produce a bluer Celeste. Also, typically, I've seen a lot of photos from people down south who can Celeste and pick their Celestes very early, before they're typically very ripe. Blue Celeste, or the, the Celeste types that get blue, I should, I should mention, I should really... I'm not sure if blue Celeste is really a great term anymore, but the, the Celeste figs that actually turn blue on their skin um, will really only do so uh, as the fig ripens in its more final stages. In the beginning stages of the fruit, it's either quite brown, maybe even a little bit um, yellowish in color, and then as it starts to turn brown, it gets to a darker color that you might see. Maybe it's even a little bit gray. Um, and then eventually 
depending on the variety, depending on your conditions, the skin could turn blue. Here is um, actually a blue Celeste that I grow and ripened last year. You can see the skin has that typical cracking as well, which is also a very good indicator that you're dealing with a Celeste. You can tell by the pattern of the cracks in the skin. But here it is. This is a quite a ripe blue Celeste, or this is uh, actually, I think this is Violette de Marseille. And uh, you'll notice that it's not really that blue. Um, and this is, as it really has become ripe, it really has hung on the tree for quite some time. Here's the inside of the fruit. Here's the inside of another fruit, Blue Celeste. And then here's the outside on some of them as well. This one was quite ripe, more ripe than uh, I think any others. And you can see that the skin is now turning um, quite a bit more blue as it now is getting more and more ripe. Here's that typical crack, cracking in the skin. It even has a lot of so much honey that it's leaking through the skin. The nectar is leaking through the skin, not actually at the eye. It's leaking through the skin. That's how sweet that fruit is. And that's how ripe it was, actually. Um, so that fig, I believe, was probably on the tree for about 8 to 10 days before I had picked this. So it's been, it's been ripening for a long time. Um, anyway, so that is uh, Celeste and Blue Celeste. Here's another one here, Violet de Marseille from Thierry's blog once again. And you can zoom in. Here's the classic leaf pattern. Here's some of the fruits and how blue they've gotten for him on his probably much more mature tree or wherever the tree is that he's taking the photos from. And you can see the pulp is getting quite dark as it really has started to shrivel and dry up on the tree. Even this one here you typically are not seeing such a dark pulp um, even though this particular f this particular fruit is quite dark the skin is quite dark and yet the inside really hasn't turned to this darker color just yet and then of course we can wrap this up so how does this compare to black celeste and I have a uh, number of videos now on Black Celeste. This one here is called An Ode to the Genetic Diversity of Figs, plus a thank you. And you can, we're really just in this video not really talking about the fruits, but we're talking about how amazing figs are. This right here is a Black Celeste, and you can see how dark the pigmentation is. Originally, when we first started ripening this fruit, by the way, the first video that we did was this one here, Black Celeste, my favorite Celeste heirloom, because it didn't take me very long. Right away, I realized how special this particular fruit is. It didn't, uh, this I think, I don't even think this is the first fruit. It might be the first fruit, but it instantly became my favorite. I think uh, actually what happened is that this was the first fruit that I ripened from that tree, from this variety. And um, before I had actually published this video, I had tasted quite a few more. So I was comfortable making this statement. I was observing the tree a lot closer and a lot more. But um, you can see here in this video, this is really the first fruit that we picked. And we talk about it. We tasted it. I don't think I was really too high on it in this particular video, even, you know, even uh, in regard to the title, you may think otherwise, but we really were not totally sure on this particular variety at this uh, current moment. So here's a timeline of the photos here. Again, these are the first fruits I ripened. You can see that uh, as time went on, I really learned how to pick the fruit when to pick the fruit, when it actually was ripe. 
And uh, the next two fruits that I picked really weren't um, as impressive as the as the as they had been from that point forward because these two fruits I got very excited to see more from this variety and picked them a little bit too early. And you can see, yeah, the skin is actually very blue. Um, you know, it depends, I guess, what you want to call it, but you could say as it is black celeste i would say it's definitely more of a blue color or of a very dark blue almost purple um again you still have the typical cracking this pattern is very similar you can see the lighter color here on the skin however what is interesting about this um varieties that the second video that we did we called it this fig is absurd because you know as we've started ripening more of them i was just like what that's incredible we ripened a fruit that looks like this i had never seen that before um i've seen it actually from another grower paulie in british columbia canada he had ripened fruits with this sort of pigmentation and i was very intrigued from that point forward but as they started ripening, and here's actually those flower parts I mentioned that uh, don't ripen or act a bit strange uh, in the center of the fig. But this I was so blown away because I was like, well, this can't really keep happening, right? I mean, this pigmentation, as I finally learned how to pick them, the better and better they tasted, the more better they looked. And then, of course, the next one I picked was again the same story and then i had to do a video on this particular fruit once again um because i was just blown away and then in this video we really discussed just how tasty it is and what it tastes like um i think i may even probably have cleared up in this video if it is indeed different than celeste or blue celeste what I want to point out in this particular video, kind of lost my spot here of where, here we go. So you can see the unripe figs on the tree, which I think is very valuable to prove my point. Um, here are the green figs as they're starting to swell. And then right below it is a fig that had turned from green to this yellowish color here. Um, and as the figs then start to ripen, we have something down here where this brown fig turns to this purple. And it happens, or this blue, uh, it's really reddish and blue together, so I guess it is a purple um, and the bottom starts to turn blue. So this is a very, very short period of time where the fig has just really started to swell. And then within a day or two, we already have the blue color. So in a very short period of time, we're already at the blue. And that's why it's so tricky. That's That was why it was so difficult. Here's another fruit where you can see it's got the reddish and it's starting to really get that blue. And eventually here on the right is another one that is blue. But just because it's blue doesn't mean it's really fully ripe as shown in this, uh, you know, this particular um, album here, this photo album, where the skin is blue, but look, the inside is not showing that it's really fully ripe. So it's not really until the fruit has turned quite blue it's starting to shrivel up a bit. Um, that's really what you're looking for. And then the inside, once you start to see some of that shriveling, it turns into this really amazing pigmentation here that's purple, almost black on the inside. Um, again, here's another one. And then pretty much every fig after I learned how to pick them uh, realized what I was doing is that they all had this pigmentation, this really dark purple 
almost black pigmentation. Um, and I just, you know, objectively, I have never ripened another fig with the name Celeste or related to Celeste that looks anything like this. Um, whether that was on the inside or the outside. Um, yeah, the a lot of the descriptors are the same, right? You have a similar stem, a similar length of neck. You have the cracks in the skin, the leaf patterns the same. Um, even the flower parts in the center, the fact that we have the void, the fact that also it's a very sweet fruit. Um, what else? The fact that the skin turns rather blue. Um, even the, this coloration here on the stem could be a nice little descriptor. Also, the shape of the fruit is very similar, obviously. Um, but the colors of the skin and the colors of the pulp is pretty drastically different. Um, from really the beginning of the ripening process onwards, the colors are different. Also, um, the flavor is quite different. In fact, this one is a bit more complex than any other Celeste I've tasted. Um, it has a better ber berry flavor to it. Um, it's just a much tastier piece of fruit. Um, I also find the fruit to be quite a bit jammy in, uh, in terms of its flavor. Not that regular Celeste can't be. Um, I also find that the drying capabilities are better in that this particular fruit dries quicker. It doesn't seem to ripen or need to ripen as long um, to actually become a very ripe and tasty fruit. So the hang time is probably a bit lower. Um, in terms of other things like hardiness and vigor and productivity, I really can't comment. I really don't know. Um, in terms of the skin, I've noticed, at least on Black Celeste, that it has a very tough, chewy skin. And it seems like fruit flies and birds, actually, it's quite difficult for them to penetrate through the skin. Um, it has a very interesting skin that really prevents rain from being absorbed into the fruit. This happens on so many other varieties where the rain is absorbed and because of that absorption, the fruit then expands very quickly and then cracks or splits. Um, but Celeste seems to be, even if there's a shower going on, the rain is just, it's almost like you have a waterproof, it's like it has a waterproof jacket on the fruit and the, wa and the rain just slides right off the waterproof jacket and doesn't absorb into the jacket. Now, will regular Celeste do that? Probably. Um, I really can't say if there's much of a difference that I've noticed in terms of split resistance or rain resistance or the absorption of water through the skin. Um, but what I can say for sure is the things I've mentioned, and I'll repeat them really quickly. The main differences are the hang time, the drying capabilities, the colors of the fruits, the skin and the pulp, and then of course the flavor and texture of the fruits. So there you have it. Now, even if let's say this is not true, right? Even if I'm wrong that Black Celeste isn't different than any of the other Celeste figs, um, who cares, right? because uh, this is a really amazing, fantastic source of Celeste strain or um, amazing adaptation, whatever you want to call it, it is an amazing piece of fruit. And uh, even if it does share the same exact genetics as Blue Celeste, to me, it doesn't matter because I know it is different enough when you observe it. I know it tastes different and all the things I just mentioned. Um, and it is a fantastic fruit. So, um, yeah, to me, it doesn't matter if it is indeed the same thing as some people are claiming it is without really any factual basis or firsthand knowledge. Um, 
with the variety, which is kind of strange why they would do that. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so thank you guys here for watching. If you enjoyed this one, thank you for getting this far in the video. I hope you guys will at some point grow Celeste, any of the different types. We'll see you soon. Um, check out our blog, as I mentioned, figboss.com. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys for the next video.